All right, Shalom. I want to give all praises to Yahweh, Bahashim, Yahweh Shai, Bahashim, Rakakwadash. Double honors to my apostles and elders of Great Millstone who rule well. Salutations to the Lord's hopeful elect scattered abroad. Shalom. All right, I'm the brother Taz of War. Back at you again with another lesson. This one here is a report. And uh, this is on the ROT News article which says, we don't know where to run. South Africans brace for new wave of devastating riots after ex-president Zuma jailed. All right, so what, what this is is prophecy because this is part of the uproars of the people. And the uproars of the people is happening throughout the four corners of this world. All right, and uh, we know that of course, these things are happening because Esau, Edom, okay, starting with these elite banking families, in particular the Rothschilds, which is the house of Esau, they are pushing their agenda across the world. And if you go and watch videos of the UN, all right, United Nations, you have a spokesman or a, represent a representative, representative which I forgot this guy's name, but he even said, and not just him, but a few other uh, people that represent the UN, they said, It'll, you will be foolish to think that this place is gonna go ever. You will be foolish to think that this place will ever go back to the normalcy of what, of what things used to be. Today is the first full day of the new world order. Outdoor gatherings are limited to two people. Exercise is allowed, but no further than a 10-kilometre radius from your home. Browsing in shops is not permitted. Only one person per household may leave to do essential shopping. And from tomorrow, funerals are limited to 10 people. This is a world pandemic. It's a one in 100 year event. So you can expect that we will have transmission uh, from time to time, and that's just the way it is. We've got to accept that this is the new world order. We've got to accept that this is the new world order. This is the new world order. This is the new world order. I want to be straight with you. There will be no return to the old normal for the foreseeable future. I repeat, there will be no return to the old normal for the foreseeable future. So people assume uh, we are just going back uh, to the good old world which we had um, and everything will be normal again in how we are used to normal in the old fashion. This is, uh, let's say, fiction. It will not happen. They say you would think it's foolish, you know, because this place would never go back to where you thought it was. And that's why you see all these riots, protests, uproars of the people happening throughout the world because there's no justice, all right? There's also loss of substance like food, water, okay? And a lot of politics, you know? Just recently, we all know that E assassinated that uh, Haitian president. And um, it's happening everywhere. If you're not going according to their agenda, then they're gonna get somebody in their office to do what they plan on doing. But I say all that to sum the matter in the fact that Yahweh Bahashim Yahweh Shai is bringing Esau into his own trap. So let's read a, one or two paragraphs here and you can see uh, the, the, the looting, the rioting. And I also seen videos somebody showed me from off TikTok. You know, they look just like 2020 dealing with the riots of the Black Lives Matters when they tore up the city, they tore up the streets, you know? This is happening, man. And this is Bible prophecy. All right, so I'm gonna read this paragraph. It says, locals are preparing for the worst after a wave of mass rioting and looting swept across South Africa, finally following the arrest of its former president. The military has been deployed to help police maintain order all right so you see the uh, problem reaction and then you hear you see the solution okay now deployed to help police maintain 
Now who, what, the military, okay? So now it says riders ran wild, ransacking large shopping malls and smaller businesses, emptying out ATMs and setting buildings on fire, okay? So from here, what I like to do is go here to Second Edges chapter nine and start at verse one. It says, he answered me then and said, measure thou the time diligently in itself and when thou seest parts of the signs pass which I have told thee before then shalt thou understand that it is the very same time wherein the highest will begin to visit the world which he made and we're witnessing it we're in that now where the Lord is visiting this world in which he made notice it said he all right Yahweh which is he is or he to be or he exists, the Most High, all right? Bahashim Yahweh Shai, which Bahashim means in the name, Yahweh Shai means he savior, which that's the son's name, who the world ignorantly called Jesus Christ. So it says, then shall thou understand that it is the very same time wherein the highest will begin to visit the world, which he made, not he made, all right, Esau, Edom, all right, with their fake, false philosophies, okay, their false science, their false education, their false knowledge. He didn't make this world, okay? He's just a creature that the Most High created in this world to be the wicked. Because he right now is playing God. All right, his whole, his whole madness is to force technology inside your body. They censoring us from saying certain words and speaking the truth of the real narrative, which is of this exposing their agenda. And they don't want that. E position right now is trying or striving, I should say, striving to eliminate the most high out the picture okay he wants to be as though he the most high second thessalonians chapter 2 verse 4 who opposeth and exhorteth himself above all that is called god or that is worship so that he as god sitteth in the temple of god showing himself that he is god so let's continue verse 3 therefore when there shall be seen earthquakes and uproars of the people in the world then shalt thou well understand that the most high speck of those things from the days that were before thee even from the beginning so it says therefore when there shall be seen earthquakes and we've been seeing earthquakes year after year there's earthquakes right now as i speak okay that's happening in diverse places happening all through the four corners of the world right and it says uproars we've been seeing uproars for a couple of years now but these earthquakes and uproars basically to intensify especially the uproars in this particular moment okay in this particular moment you're seeing massive riots massive protests massive uproars throughout the world not just here in the states so that means let me go to the book of proverbs read a quick precept that came to mind proverbs 29 and 2 when the righteous are in authority the people rejoice when the wicked bear rule the people mourn so the people are mourning when there's a people uproaring rioting protesting against the government that means that the people are mourning and they're looking for justice but because of e establishing his new world order okay he's making the people suffer he's making the people to be ill okay now i can't remember what word it was was it plague or pestilence for brothers in the camp brother Chapal, he looked it up and it said uh it said a continued trouble because the Lord is bringing basically in a continued trouble one thing after another 
one thing after another okay which eventually is going to bring to 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 an end to a stop all right so it says proverbs 29 and 2 when the righteous are in authority the people rejoice when the wicked bear rule the people mourn all right and the people are mourning man and this is why you see this happening in south africa right now that the title is we don't know where to run south africans brace for new wave of devastating riots after ex-president zuma jailed all right so dealing with a lot of politics a lot of guys in office who probably more than likely not going along with the agenda all right they're getting x'd out they're getting locked up they're getting killed all right so let's get back to the book of second address here chapter 9 verse 3 therefore when there shall be seen earthquakes and uproars of the people in the world and that's what that and hey that uproar in south africa that's only one of a, uh, of, of of more to come all right there have been plenty more before that be, it been plenty more before and there's plenty more that's coming after okay so keep that in mind it says verse 4 then shall thou well understand that the most high speck of those things which from the days that were before thee even from the beginning so guess what the end was spoken from the very beginning so he said then shall thou well understand and we could see we understand the season and time we're living in matter of fact uh elder apostle tahar through the spirit and power of yahweh bashim yahweh shai uh he coined this year the year of hasting unto the day of our lord and and that's exactly what this year is man the hasting all right we're hasting the day of our lord we pray to Yahweh Bashim Yahweh Shai that he shorten the days for the elect's sake. All right, we pray for fewer days left for this God forsaken wicked society, America. Better yet known as Babylon the Great, AKA Mother of Harlots. So it says, Then shalt thou well understand that the Most High speck of those things from the days that were before thee, even from the beginning, for like, for like as all that is made in the world have a beginning and an end and the end is manifesting and guess what we're seeing the end manifest all right because everything has a beginning and he says and it comes to an end look at the dynasties or look at the powers that ruled the most dominant powers that ruled in this world you had the assyrian empire you had the babylonian empire you had the greeks all right which were edomites you had the romans which were edomites then rome fell and then they came back up into power all right and now you you had great britain and out of great britain you had america and these are all edomites and guess what they all had well until previously now we're still in america but these past kingdoms had an end and it says the end is manifesting meaning it's coming to life meaning it's coming to life before your eyes it's manifesting so it says even so the times also of the highest have plain beginning beginnings and wonder and powerful works and ending and effects and signs and that right there is heavy man because he says even so the times also of the highest have plain beginnings and wonder you know wonder wonder you know you're wondering now well most of these people in the world they're wondering what they call the uap ufos are they're wondering all right the government knows what they are but instead they holding back information to control a narrative all right on what they want to give out to the people to make the people believe in what the government wants you to believe they are which we know what they are all right they're the chariots of yahweh the angels ride in those vehicles okay so it says in powerful works because guess what through powerful works you're going to see miracles man you're going to see things where the lord is going to do divine intervention well, he's going to come in between man you know you're going to witness brothers having spiritual powers that's powerful works it says and endings and effects and signs because the end is going to end with thermonuclear fire all right by the ways of thermonuclear missiles those icbms intercontinental ballistic missiles and that's through the act of world war three all right because there will be a world war three you better believe it okay so verse seven and every one that shall be saved and shall be able to escape by his works and by faith whereby ye have believed. So it says, every one shall be saved. And that's what we're looking 
to uh to be to be saved man we're looking to get delivered meanwhile you got christianity they're saying that they're saved already and my question is what are you saved from when jacob's trouble is on his way when we're, we're still waiting for his second return so what are you saved from it says and shall be able to escape by his works that reminds me of apostle paul when he said uh faith without works is dead this is the book of james chapter 2 verse 14 what doeth it profit my brethren though a man say he hath faith and have not works can faith save him if a brother or sister be naked and destitute of daily food and one of you say unto them depart in peace be ye warm and filled notwithstanding ye gave them not those things which are needful to the body what doeth it profit even so faith if it have not works is dead being alone verse 18 yea a man say thou hast faith and i have works show me thou faith without thou works and i will show thee my faith by my works all right faith without works is dead because you got to have some sort of works not everybody's a prophet not everybody's a teacher all right you may have helps all right the scriptures say uh, uh if thou give a cup of cold water to one of these little ones in the name of a disciple he shall not lose his reward roughly paraphrasing so that means that this person that helped and gave aid to one of the lord's uh men chosen to one of the lord's chosen men all right they're gonna they're gonna they're not gonna lose their salvation so you're gonna have those all right which um which which are not which which are not prophets but they're part of that election you know because they put in some sort of work obviously this is the book of Matthew chapter 10 verse 40 he that receiveth you receiveth me and he that receiveth me receiveth him that sent me he that receiveth a prophet in the name of a prophet shall receive a prophet's reward and he that receiveth a righteous man in the name of a righteous man shall receive a righteous man's reward and whosoever shall give to drink unto one of these little ones a cup of cold water only in the name of a disciple verily i say unto you verily i say unto you he shall in no wise lose his reward so it says and shall be able to escape by his works it says and by faith and when it says by faith it reminds me of uh the parable in which it speaks of the uh, 11th hour all right now i don't want to grab these scriptures i just want to make this a quick lesson so what i do I leave the scripture in the post-production, okay? But the parable in which Yahweh Shai spoke of the 11th hour dealing with the penny, you're gonna have Israelites that's gonna believe in the very end, all right? Which we, we like to call the 11 o'clock Israelites. They're gonna believe in the very end to receive that penny. And that penny represents salvation, man, all right? So it says, and by faith. So you're not gonna be saved unless you have works faith it says and whereby ye have believe and belief so all you non-believers all you scorners that take delight in your scorning you scoffers you false prophets the lord gonna destroy you okay because the scriptures do say many are called but few are chosen some gonna say uh, the lord gonna say i never knew you man this is the book of matthews chapter 7 verse 21 not everyone that say unto me lord lord shall enter into the kingdom of heaven but he that doeth the will of my father which is in heaven many will say to me in that day lord lord have we not prophesied in thy name and in thy name have cast out devils and in thy name done many wonderful works and then will i profess unto them i never knew you depart from me ye that work iniquity okay Some going to, the Lord going to say, I never knew you. All right. So anyway, verse, verse eight shall be preserved from the said perils and shall see my salvation in my land and within my borders. For I have sanctified them for me from the beginning. And that reminds me of the word predestinate. The Lord have predestinated his elect from the very beginning. So by in order to be saved, first off, you have to be predestinated, the elect. The elect is going to have works, all right? They're going to have faith, and they're going to believe. 
and they're going to be preserved from the said perils, which is the trouble, all right, that the Lord is going to bring wrath upon the wicked. And guess what? You got the wicked itself, which is Esau, Edom, okay? But you also have, the, you have those that are wickedly, that's Israelites, that the Lord is just not dealing with, okay? And he's going to destroy them. So the Lord's anger is upon the wicked. It says, shall be preserved from the said perils and shall see my salvation in my land and within my borders. For I have sanctified them for me from the beginning. And that's to let you know that this is a movie. All right. And everything's been written. Okay. The Lord have written it in from the very beginning. So what we're playing out right now by witnessing prophecies. And this particular prophecy here is uproars of the people. All right. Which Yahweh Shai spoke of prophecies in Matthew 24. All right, he said uh, earthquakes in diverse places, rumors of wars, nation versus nations, kingdom versus kingdom. You know, these are those signs. We're right now in those birth pains, man. You know, headed down, uh, headed toward the end, headed toward when that, that baby's going to be born. And that symbolically means when Yahweh Shai cracked those clouds, man. All right, and saved the remnant of his elect. So it says, then shall they be in pitiful case. Verse 9, then shall they be in pitiful case which now have abused my ways and they have, and they that have cast them away despitefully shall dwell in torments. So for you scoffers and scorners that have cast away the Lord uh, away and they that have cast them away despitefully shall dwell in torments. So you're going to be tormented. You're going to be tormented and afraid of dying. You're going to be tormented in your mind when you sleep. You're going to be tormenting you're going to be tormented by not being able to eat. You're going to be tormenting, tormented by, by the way of, you know, you, you losing loved ones, by mourning and, and aching and pain and sorrow and vexation of spirit. And ultimately, you're going to be tormented, all right, and destroyed by the ways of thermonuclear fire. So it says, for such as in their life have received benefits and have not known me. And there's a lot of men, okay, a lot of you women have received benefits. And I'm not talking about from the government, man, okay? I'm talking about those of the circumcision in particular, all right, that basically receive uh, that gain, man. You know, you think everything's sweet because you sit in some sort of seat. You think things, you think shit cool because you sit in some type of seat. You want to be the chief high priest, you know. You want, you want to get rewards from heathens, you know. So guess what? For such as in their life have received benefits. And it also goes toward those two thirds, all right, that have received the benefits of this world, the pleasures of this world. All right. Let me say this again. It's something I thought of the other day. That uh you got you got Edomites that are chasing wealth. You got rich folks, black folks, which are chasing riches, and then you got regular people, poor people that are chasing pleasure. So you have our people that are poor just chasing pleasure. They're not chasing riches, nor are they chasing wealth, nor are they chasing truth. They're just chasing pleasure. So these benefits that you received, you despise the ways of the Lord because you are for pleasure. All right. Just like a rich man, a rich man, he, he's for riches. So he don't desire the ways of the Lord. He receives some benefits. All right. You uh, have your constellation. All right. So it says, for such as in their life have received benefits and have not known me. And they that have lofted my law while they yet had liberty. And when yet place of repentance was open unto them, they understood not but despised it. You see? And repentance was open. And repentance is still open. Excuse me, these bugs. Repentance is still open. Okay? Until the, door, to the day that the Lord closed the door of repentance. He shut the prophets up. Alright? And then the prophecy going to come to pass. Where famine on his word is going to come. All right. And your people are going to go to and fro seeking the word of the Lord, but you shall not find it. So even after the Lord shut the prophets up, prophecy is still going to happen, man. You see? So, and they that have lofted my law while they had yet liberty, because you have liberty now. The Lord loosened our captivity up so that we can serve him. Not to build on America, man. All right. You got, you got Jake that think they patriots, man. You want to build back better. Well, guess what? The Lord is destroying the place that you thinking you, you could build. You know? This place is done for. There's an agenda. There's a new way. You got to go watch the UN news. That's maybe what you're missing. And you can't really see the picture for some of, some of you guys, man. 
Go watch UN News and listen to the spokesmen and representatives, man. They're laughing at people that think it's gonna come back to normalcy. Jacob here arguing on YouTube or who the biggest YouTuber and, they, and this guy talking about this and this guy talking about that for uh, Jake. And guess what? They both wrong, man. Because you ain't teaching your how about Shimmy I was shot. You're not building a hedge, all right, for Jacob's trouble. You people gonna be running around here like chickens with their head cut off, man. You know, following the flock, following the multitude to do even more evil in that day. Okay? So it says, And they that have lofted my law while they had yet liberty, and when yet place of repentance was open unto them, understood not but despised it. So therefore, you despise this word. Y'all laugh at us. You know, we talk about the Israelites this and this and that, we this, we that. Little do y'all know that when these things come to pass, you're going to be looking for these very same men that you scoffed and scorned. And really, it's not us you really scoffing and scorning. It's the one that sent us. Okay? It's the one that sent the prophets. It's who you scoffing and scorning. All right? Because you're really scoffing and scorning Yahweh Bashem Yahweh Shai, which is the true and living power. Now it says, verse 12, the same must know it after death by pain. So you're not going to get this truth until you die. And that means that when you go back up to this, the fourth dimension in the spirit realm, that's when you're going to be in your right mind, man. You're going to have the truth and you're going to know. All right. So it says verse 13. And therefore, be not thou curious how the ungodly shall be punished and when, but inquire how the righteous shall be saved, whose the world is and for whom the world is created. You hear that, e Esau? This world is not for you. It's not for the wicked. The Lord made the world for the Israelites. He made the world for Jacob, Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. Okay, these people who the Lord have chosen. And it says, and for whom the world is created. See, E, these uh, Edomites, and I'm talking about the elites, and this agenda they're pushing, they're pushing for you to be a transhuman, man. Their end goal is for you to have technology inside your body. Mainly, as the scriptures say in Revelation 13, the MOB. All right? He calls of all, both small and great, rich and poor, free and bond, to receive a mark in his right hand or on his forehead. Okay? So, that's the end of gold. All right? The guy, I can't remember this guy's name, but he said, look. He said, you, you, you it's foolish to think. This is what the UN spokesman representative said. And I can't remember his name, so I'm just going to put those titles on him. Because he does a lot of speaking for the agenda of the United Nations, right? Which is the New World Order, okay? Basically, the representation, representation for NATO, the European Union, right? To govern, empower, and control over the whole world. And their goal is to eliminate the Most High. So you could say that this is another attempt, like the time of the Tower of Babel, to eliminate the Most High out of the equation. When the Most High said he is, all right, he exists. All right, so it says who the world is and for whom the world is created. So you got Esau, which is, which is his end goal, and I'll say it again, his end goal is for you to be programmed with technology, man. All right, this is the beast system. This is the image of the beast. Okay, it goes back to the Roman system, which now being modified and made to this new system of this technology, the internet of things, which gives Esau the power and the control to govern the world. This, this technology that they have is game changing. It's a miracle, okay? It's to make him, it's to, make him to be, a, be the, the, the highest, all right? When in fact, he's not the highest. He's the lowest, according to Obadiah, all right? So I, right, you know what? I get Obadiah real quick. That's just basically it. I'm kind of stretching it, you know. But uh, let's end, end the show. This is the book of Obadiah. And uh, I'll just read from one. It says, uh, Obadiah 1 and 1. The vision of Obadiah does say of Yahweh concerning Edom. All right, this is talking about you Edomites. It says, we have heard the rumor well, a rumor from the from Yahweh, an ambassador is sent among the heathen. Arise ye and let us rise up against her in battle. Behold, I have made thee small among the heathen, thou art greatly despised. Alright? It says, The pride of thy heart have deceived thee, thou that dwellest in the cliffs of the rocks, whose habitation is high, 
that say in his heart, who shall bring me down to the ground? And that's that pride, man. That's that pride. It says, verse 4, though thou, ex though thou exalt thyself as the eagle, and though thou set thou nests among the stars, thence will I bring thee down, saith Yahweh. All right, because Esau set his, he set his nest among the stars. When he went and sent up them satellites, all right, to, go, to, heart, to govern around the world, he set his nest among the stars, man. And I believe this is when around 19, uh, what is it, 68, the 70s, all right, when the Lord started to bring him down, okay? So it says, if these came to thee, if robbers by night, how art thou cut off? Would they not have stolen till they had enough? If the grape gatherers came to thee, would they not leave some grapes? How are the things of Esau searched out? How are his hidden things sought up? All the men of thy confederacy have brought thee even to the border. The men that were at peace with thee have deceived thee and prevailed against thee. They that eat thy bread have laid a wound under thee. There is none understanding in him. And the Lord is telling you that guess what? All right. Your own men is going to come against you. All right. All the men of thy confederacy. All right. So even your own allies is going to turn against you. And that's why you got to understand, you know, because, you know, Jake gets simple. They go, well, Esau, you know, he's doing all this. God is not doing this. He's doing it. Well, the Most High making him do what he do so the Most High can show forth his power, man. That's how amazing our Lord is, man, that he uses the creatures according to his will. All right. And he ruleth in the kingdom of men. Our power is like the invisible power. Even though he's here in the presence, but he's also in the invisible where we can't see. But when he gave us understanding, he gave us that breath, the word, all right? And Yahweh Shai have left us the comforter, the Holy Spirit. We now have some sort of eyesight. We can see, all right? We see. The Lord told us and warned us. So we're warning the, the hopeful elect in these epistles and shows we do. So it says, the men that were at peace with thee have deceived thee and prevailed against thee. They that eat thou bread have laid a wound under thee. There is none understanding in him. Shall I not in that, in that day say of Yahweh, even destroy the wise men out of Edom and understanding out of the Mount of Esau? And thou mighty men, O Teman, shall be dismayed in the end that every one of the Mount of Esau may be cut off by slaughter. Woo! Because you reap what you sow. Okay? You reap what you sow. E right now is trying to, he's striving to rewrite um, he's, he's striving to, to write the narrative and write the history of, of what's, what's, what's going on now. He's trying to control this uh, destruction. You're not going to be able to control this destruction. You're going to come to that boundary that you can't pass. And the Most High is going to turn everything against you. All right. It says, for thou violence against thy brother, shame shall cover thee, and thou shalt be cut off forever. All right. So, Lord willing, I hope this lesson was edifying. All right. I'm going to end the show on that. Like I said, this is an article I came across here on RT. And this is just more prophecy. Prophecy in the sense of uh, uproars of the people, you know, going on around the world. And these things not going to stop. You know, it's going to be another incident, another situation somewhere in the world. A big massive riot protest until it really kick off to where there is no recovery. All right. Where there is no going back home, sleeping. You know and having a good night's sleep you know so lord willing i pray this lesson is edifying i want to give all praises to yahweh bahashim yahweh shai bahashim rakakwadash double honors to my apostles and elders of great millstone who rule well salutations to the lord's elect shalom